Visionary, Unifier, Freedom Fighter, Liberator, Man of Principle, Political Soldier, Nationalist, Renowned Farmer, Traditionalist, Man of the People, Brave Family Man. These are some of the words that have been used to describe him. The man, Comrade Emerson Dambuzo Mnangagwa, is of the Shumba Murambi Totem. President Emerson Mnangagwa is married to the face lady Amai Auxilia Mnangagwa, who is a renowned philanthropist. Deep in the mountainous district of Zishavane Mapanzure Komino area, on 15 September 1942, a baby boy was given to Mafidi and Murai, a political and peasantry couple. Young Emerson, just like any other rural boy, carried out several household duties, and that he did with distinction. And the Wife he did his elementary education at Lundi Primary School. Secondary, Go very, 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 and not youth. After a misunderstanding with the colonial administration, his parents relocated to Zambia in the 1950s. I can go quite to a act. 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 I can go quite to four, five, three. Akanet 
While in Zambia, at Muyoye, he completed standards 4, 5, and 6 at Mumbra boarding school. From 1958 to 1959, he attended Kafue trade school where he took a building course. He later enrolled for a four-year city and guilds industrial building program with Hodgson Technical College. As a teenager, Comrade Mnangagwa joined the Kenneth Kaunda-led United National Independence Party UNIP in 1961, occupying the position of Secretary for the Youth League in Lusaka, Zambia. In 1962, he was recruited into Zapu by William Sarurwa and subsequently moved to Tanganyika Mbeya with James Shikerema, Clement Muchachi and Dana, where they opened a Zapu camp. Zapu ya banwa, tabudi iskwa kudero. Executive ya wa kuru wa ngavaripu. Nduku tidana, ndiki banda danu wa ntawe ya unu kwa Highfields. Tichigara pa mbapa, Henry hama ziripi. Can I tell you that it's number 840 UK9? Do pataka di chigare papu. Saka do paka tanganu ana wakuru di ajitir kuti tichida msangano. O kuti wakomana wabude mno minika laende kundo trena. It was 1963. Taiwa ini umano di Solomon Nkomo wakasumbe da ambasada waiduku ku Algeria. Zambia. Zwara kuto vira, do bandaka, taka do shika kwa na umu wenzi, Lorenz Soshi, Gumbo Chuma, haifa kwa Shimbao, Rex Mungu, haifa Gweru, Osika, then Emerson Minangarwa. Saka tese te jubata ita 13, papu. Saka taka gara shaka naka muru saka afu na honga yese wiki ukomberiwe chahara wechi gazira gazira. Dobu watazo kwira bazi redu msuwa taka indao kutuwa kuinda kutanzani ya mani. Differences in Zapu led to the formation of ZANU in 1963 in the then Salisbury, now Harare. This affected the training of cadres. At the inception of ZANU in 1963, Comrade Mnangagwa became one of the key members. The same year, he proceeded to China where he received infantry and engineering training at Nanjing Training Center. The training was so comprehensive that it captured military and political aspects. After receiving military training in Egypt and China, it was now time for action. The boys returned home with a mission to free Zimbabwe from colonial bondage. In 1964, Comrade Mnangagwa attended the historic Zanu Gweru Congress, which saw the likes of Ndabaning Stole being elected as president of Zanu, Comrade Herbert Chitepo as national chairman, Comrade Leopold Takawira as vice president, and Comrade Robert Gabriel Mugabe as secretary general. 
due to his thorough military training, Comrade Mnangagwa and other colleague guerrilla fighters were given a deadly assignment to blow a locomotive in Fort Victoria, now Mashingo. <laughs> what happened was that there was a group of 14 uh, comrades who had trained and uh, they were sent across at the time uh, the late uh, chairman uh, was the heading was the head of our external wing of uh, ZAN and um, I think it was uh, no one corner who was responsible for defense and the uh, commander at the time I think was Mataure, uh, the legend Mataure. So these chaps were sent in uh, from Zambia, there were 14, but after they crossed the Zambezi, they split into two groups. One group went to Marshall and West, the other uh, drifted towards Marshall and East. And uh, when they, but the mission was to come and uh, do recruitment uh, in, in the country and uh, establish bases on the border with uh, Zambia so that when the other forces would come, they would find, they would have done all the commissariat work and they would have identified uh, points uh, where we would hide arms and so on. In 1965, Comrade Mnangagwa was arrested by Inspector Beans Bradshaw and Smith at Michael Mawema's Highfield House in the then Salisbury. He was severely brutalized and lost hearing in one ear. Saka ipapo manje ndobe tsika chanya tsikuona shumaya zvuti mahwema waka bosta kuti hai zvuti ana vakumana vorova ndima kana kuti wakaita sei ndobva tofungira vamoti ah ndofunga kuda mahwema wakaita leak information saka zvadero dzaizvo zvomanje ndobva nonzi Emerson wakazvo President Mnangagwa escaped the death sentence. On the strength of the age reflected on his documents, he was perceived to be under the legal age of majority, which was 21. <laughs> Sadly, some of his colleagues' master treasure was sentenced to life in prison. Yamini and Mlambo were executed. During the liberation struggle, Comrade Mnangagwa worked with the Crocodile Gang. This is the reason why people called him Ngwena, even up to this day. 
Of course, his totem is Shumba Murambi. Gwena, Gwena Mawira, Gwena Kuti, Gwena Yaka Tangera Pakuti, Pani Krupi Wakamu, Karana, I think, Yainz Crocodile team. Saka and Dufunga and Dupaka Firas, that would be Gwen. Do Masura and do it out. I don't know whether I'm correct, but in Dupa Mansura and Dupa Kabuda, that would be Gwen. True to most Liberation War cadres, during the Liberation struggle, Comrade Mnangagwa had four Chimurenga names. Mastangu, Daya, Skoprikiko Ridrika Dosu, Ndorimwe, Trababla Zokraya Mabunu, Ndorimwe, Rukachiwende, Ndorimwe, Smart Tembo, Ndorimwe, Kozo Wai Ramozi Waku Tindinani. He spent a total of seven years, eight months at Harare, Gray's and Kami prisons. Upon his release from prison in 1973, Comrade Mnangagwa was deported to Zambia, where he continued with his studies. He graduated with a Bachelor of Laws degree before being admitted to the bar of the High Court of Zambia in 1976. In 1977, Comrade Mnangagwa was recalled to Mozambique and elected special assistant to the then ZANU leader, Comrade Robert Gabriel Mugabe, and was a member of the National Executive of ZANU at the historic Chimoyo Congress. In that capacity, he was head of both military and civil intelligence, deputized by the late General Retired Vitalis Musungwa Gaba Zinawashe. He was a member of the High Command and member of the Central Committee. He led the first group of comrades, Didmas Mutasa, Edison Zobo, and General Solomon Tafumane Mujuru from Maputo to Harare during the ceasefire. President Mnangagwa was part of the Patriotic Front delegation which attended the Langest House Talks in London in 1979. The Langest House Talks culminated into the holding of the first ever democratic elections leading to Zimbabwe independence in 1980. So arm in arms, with arms, we'll fight this little struggle, children. That's the only way we can overcome our little trouble. And brother, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He was appointed Minister of National Security and headed the Joint High Command during the integration of the Zimbabwe National Army. He held several ministerial and parliamentary positions. I'm 
His tenure of office as vice president between 2014 and 2017 was never rosy. First, he endured public scorn by the then first lady, Dr. Stop It, Amai Grace Mugabe, acting as a friend for the G40 cabal, a counter-revolutionary faction that had emerged in ZANU-PF. What followed was his poisoning at the so-called Youth Interface Rally at Pelandava Stadium in Gwanda, and he was resultantly airlifted to South Africa for treatment. The ZANU-PF factional fights reached the boiling point again at another so-called Youth Interface Rally at White City Stadium in Vulawayo on the 4th of November 2017. Indeed, Vamunangagwa Vakodonezwa in 48 hours. The then President Robert Gabriel Mugabe fired Comrade Mnangagwa on the 6th of November 2017. The capture of the former President Robert Gabriel Mugabe by criminal elements did not go down well with the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, leading to the famous Operation Restore Legacy. Fellow Zimbabweans, following the address we made on 13 November 2017, which we believe our main broadcaster, Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, and the Herald were directed not to publicize the situation in our country, has moved to another level. November 18, 2017, Zimbabweans from all walks of life marched in solidarity with the military. We love our country, we don't want violence, we just want change. We're happy to be here to support and we want the same as everyone else. My youth, Zimbabwe, we are Nakaya Gadsri. They're dignified, they're graceful, they're humble. You are glory to God. Praise be to God. The power of the people prevailed. We have had such fruitful deliberations, which will have a monumental impact on our parties and the people. And indeed, Zimbabwe is a whole. We have seen democracy at play the people we have spoken. This Central Committee has agreed on the recall of the President and Third Secretary of ZANU-PF, Comrade Arajim Gari. He has been our leader for a long time, and we have all learned a great deal from him. It is a sad page in the history of our Revolutionary Party that Comrade Arajim Gari has to depart in such a manner. It is unfortunate, Comrades, that he had surrounded himself with a wicked cabal bent on reversing the gains of our liberation struggle. Comrade Arajim Gabe, be and is hereby recalled from the position of President and First Secretary of ZANU-PF Coffee. Comrade E.D. Munangagwa be the party's nominee to be appointed to fill the vacancy of state president in terms of part 4, paragraph 14, subparagraph 5 of the sixth schedule of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, amendment number 20. Former President Robert Gabriel Mugabe resigned on 21 November 2017, bowing down to the demands of the people and also fearing impeachment. I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, in terms of section 96, subsection 1 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, hereby formally tender my resignation as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. The ZANU-PF Central Committee nominated Comrade Mnangagwa as the President and First Secretary of the ruling party ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF has notified me that the Central Committee of ZANU-PF met 
in a special session at the party headquarters in Harare on the 19th November 2017 and resolved that, and I quote, in the event that Comrade Robert Gabriel Mugabe resigned or was impeached, Comrade Emerson Dambuzom Nangagwa was appointed as Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front, ZANU-PF's nominee to fill, to fill the vacancy in the office of the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. He thus returned from exile in South Africa and received a hero's welcome at the party headquarters in Harare. In my discussions with some heads of state, including spending about one and a half hours with President Zuma, also the President of Namibia, yeah. uh, the former President of Tanzania, Kikwete, yeah. and others, they have hailed the discipline and the peacefulness of the people of Zimbabwe. Yeah. The way you have managed this process makes Sadiq proud, not only on this continent, but worldwide. I appeal to all genuine patriotic Zimbabweans yes. to come together. Yes. We went together. Yes. No one is more important than the other. Yes. We are all Zimbabweans. On 24 November 2017, Comrade Mnangagwa was inaugurated as the president of Zimbabwe. I, Emerson, Swear that as President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, I will be faithful. I will discharge my duties with all my strength to the best of my knowledge and ability and a true to the dictates of my conscience and that I will devote myself to the well-being of Zimbabwe and its people. So help me God. He promulgated the new trajectory for Zimbabwe. The thrust was, of course, on economics ahead of politics. As we focus on recovering our economy, we must shed misbehaviors and the acts of indiscipline which have characterized the past. Acts of corruption must stop. Where these occur, swift, swift, swift justice must be served. What distinguishes President Mnangagwa from all other politicians is his maturity and respect and the ability to embrace all people, regardless of different viewpoints on different issues. Let me at this stage pay special tribute to one of and the only surviving founding father of our nation, Comrade Robert Gabriel Mugabe. He led us in our struggle for national independence. He assumed responsibilities of leadership at the formative and a very challenging time at the birth of our nation. That is to be lauded and celebrated for all times. Nangagwa, I've described him as a very simple person, jovial person, somebody who is capable to really come from those heights down to earth. But because of the way he has been brought up, 
is capable of taking on the toughest tasks. And he is a very highly loyal person, very trustworthy person. And I've worked with him on difficult issues. And once you agree on a thing and you have to carry it out, you can always, always, always trust that you will carry it out. ED brought glad tidings to a nation that was fast losing hope. Upon assuming the highest office of the land, Comrade Mnangagwa immediately embarked on a diplomatic offensive to inform the regional friends of Zimbabwe that there was now change of guard in the country. He thus visited Zambia, Namibia, South Africa, Mozambique, Botswana and Angola and he had fruitful engagements with his southern African counterparts. As the reintegration of Zimbabwe into the global village through re-engagement and engagement gained impetus, President Mnangagwa took the Zimbabwe is open for business mantra to the Davos summit in Switzerland in January 2018. Mr. President, let's begin with that, with that task of economic recovery. In Zimbabwe, in order to catch up with the region, you know, I'm sure you're aware that uh, Zimbabwe is lagged behind in many areas as a result of uh, isolation for the past 16 or 18 years uh, of our history. Now, we are saying to the world, uh, Zimbabwe is now open for business. To do so, it is necessary that uh, we look at all the legislation which we have, which has been constraining uh, business coming into Zimbabwe, so that there's ease of business, doing business uh, in Zimbabwe. I think we've gone in 180 degree turn uh, in, from the time that uh, he was sworn in, uh, from the time that the new dispensation came in, and uh, from the time the Second Republic came in, uh, in the sense that we came from an isolated uh, position where we had this I don't care attitude, we can do whatever we want on our own. But uh, Zimbabwe is not an island. We live amongst a, a, a nation, a group of nations, a family of nations, and we need other people, other countries' uh, contribution to the development of our economy, to the development of our country. So he came in with the Zimbabwe is open for business, meaning that what we had before which closed out uh, people who wanted to do business in Zimbabwe, was now open. Within a short space of time, the Zimbabwe is open for business mantra became the clarion call for every Zimbabwean. The results were amazing. Unprecedented investment commitments worth billions of dollars were unlocked. Well, the, the two republics are clearly different uh, in the sense that the First Republic uh, a lot of, uh, there were a lot of restrictions, there were a lot of policy inconsistencies, uh, which then made it very difficult uh, for investors to make a decision uh, to invest in Zimbabwe. The Second Republic has come in and done away with a lot of those uh, policy inconsistencies and given investors a clear vision of where government stands, what government wants to do, and how government is uh, clearly in the position of protecting uh, investors' uh, property rights. Well, the new dispensation has come up with uh, a different focus altogether. We are now focusing on uh, economic development, delivering uh, the benefits of independence to the people. Uh, before the new dispensation, I think the focus was a bit different. We were, in, whilst we were enjoying independence, um, but we were more focusing on politics. Uh, but as you can see from the mantra, Zimbabwe is open for business. The new dispensation is focusing on delivering the economic benefits of independence to the people. A series of groundbreaking ceremonies and commissioning of mega projects followed at a rate that has never been seen in Zimbabwe since independence in 1980. These include commissioning of the $400 million NRZ coaches, wagons and locomotives, 21 February 2018.
commissioning and switching on of the $533 million Kariba South Power Station project, 28 March 2018. Command Livestock Program launched in Gwanda, 22 June 2018. $1.5 billion Wange Thermal Power Station expansion, 27 June 2018. $241 million Bite Bridge Border Expansion Project, 11 July 2018. $4.2 billion Caro Resources Groundbreaking Ceremony in Mondoro, 25 July 2018. In line with the constitutional requirements, Zimbabwe held its harmonized elections in July 2018. President Emerson Dambuzo Mnangagwa was elected president of the Second Republic, defeating 22 other presidential contestants. The Constitutional Court declared Comrade Emerson Mnangagwa as the winner on the 24th of August 2018, paving the way for his swearing-in ceremony on 26 August 2018. Now with a full mandate, President Mnangagwa embarked on a mission to meet various groups of the Zimbabwean society. On the international front, the re-engagement and engagement drive carried on. Our two countries, Zimbabwe and the United Kingdom, are bonded by an inseparable history, probably the closest DNA. Instead of acting as particularly as a factor that divides us, this history must be our rallying point in actual fact. Of course, at times, we'll interpret that history in different ways, and that is only to be expected. We are, however, need to emphasize our areas of convergence so that we build on them as a resource to tackle our differences. True to his 2018 election campaign promises, Zimbabwe is on the right path to economic recovery guided by Vision 2030. <music> Under the leadership of President Emerson Mnangagwa, Zimbabwe has adopted a complete paradigm shift and is set for a major economic boom. It is therefore incumbent upon the people of Zimbabwe to heed the clarion call of the president towards national development. The foundation has been laid, and brick upon brick, Ibwe Pamsoro Pebre, Zimbabwe is emerging as an economic powerhouse under the leadership of the men, President Emerson Dambuzo Mnangagwa. <laughs> Yeah, I'm scared.